this was about the same time that net bands started being brought up and uh, during that time period Florida instituted their net bands and we had a huge influx of Florida fishermen here so that they could work and the moratorium uh, in, in preparation for the Fisheries Reform Act worked. So we're talking about 1993, Right, uh -huh. yes. Uh, massive fish kills because of pollution. There was a lot going on. Do you have any sense of why the General Assembly felt compelled in 1994 to put the moratorium on commercial fishing license, appoint the steering committee to look at fisheries management? What were the driving issues behind that? Well, ironically, the simplest answer to that is it was crab pots and the proliferation of crab pots. And um, But by the time fisheries reform was finished, the only thing not regulated was crab pots. That and, and fishermen beginning to come in here from other states, I think, was really causing concern. And, um, and one of the things in putting the moratorium on there uh, I think that there was a there was a time frame. I think they announced the moratorium in advance, and there was a time frame that people knew that there was going to be a cap and that there would be value to those fishing licenses. So the very people who were advocating a complete net ban in North Carolina were buying up fishing licenses as investments. And fam fishing families were buying them for every child they had and maybe five in the future. And so there was uh, an explosion of fishing licenses at first. So it spiked. Yes. Really. Uh huh. Okay. But they were people that really had no intentions of fishing. What was the problem with crab pots? Why did the General Assembly or folks in the state feel like something needed to be done with crab pots? Because there were people that were, were setting like 4,000 crab pots at a time. I mean, there were huge bodies of, of water that you really had to be careful navigating. There were so many pots and more than they could reasonably check themselves. And um, uh, some of them were using um, a lot of migrant help and sending them out to do it. And at the time, they didn't have to be licensed. They were working under somebody else's license. And so there was, there was a feeling that that, that fishery could collapse okay. if it wasn't put under control. And do you have any idea how that came to be sort of expanded from just looking at crab pots to looking at you know, all fisheries in the state? I think part of it, and I was I was kind of on the outside of, of that conversation, but I think part of it was there was a feeling that with the threat of net bans, that if they would be proactive and go ahead and get a regulatory process in place and that, that they could avoid that issue coming up on the table. And I think that that was even promised by some of the groups and which didn't hold true at all.